Hello and welcome to this last lecture of the introductory section. So in this lecture we are going to learn about the concept of layered test bench architecture and the importance of building layered test benches and how a layered test bench will look like. So in the previous lecture we uh, learned that a verification methodology should uh, provide you a layered approach for development such that your development task can be split uh, between multiple people and it can be developed much faster and will also enable you to reuse the components of the layered test bench in say different verification environments across projects or across block level or chip level environments. So let's uh, understand that. So structured test benches does, uh, are important for complex DUT verification in terms of better maintainability, better reusability and also it will allow you to develop uh, parallelly uh, so that your development task development time can be reduced so we'll see how these are achieved in the following slides so this diagram shows how a traditional test bench will look like so i think most of you should be familiar how a test bench uh, will look like traditionally so you have a dut or design on the test that is the dut which is to be verified and you typically you have a stimulus part which will include a test or a stimulus generator along with a driver that can drive all your stimulus to the design and then you might have a slave or a responder uh, which kind of responds or sings all the outputs from the duty and then typically you will have a checker or scoreboard board that kind of say taps into your driver or some of the interface signals and then it kind of uh, checks whether the behavior of the design is uh, correct. So in the traditional test bench you don't really uh, separate between a driver as well as a monitor or a pin level interface etc. So the driver might have typically an interface that allow you to get a handle to all the signals, all the input signals, the DUT and then you might have say a set of tasks or functions that allow you to drive your stimulus to the DUT as per the design protocol and the checker scoreboard might also be tapping directly into say some of the driver cues or some of the interface signals to uh, predict the behavior of the design so now let's see how this can be partitioned or restructured into a layered test bench so here is another uh, diagram which shows the same dut to be verified which has a set of inputs and a set of outputs now we have a driver that needs to drive to the duty stimulus and then you have a responder and maybe you'll have also a slave which can kind of uh, generate stimulus to the responder so now let's try to divide and then you have like a set of stimulus generators and scoreboard these are all the other verification components so now let's try to divide this into say three layers so let's start with the lower layer as the dut so the DUT is treated as the lower layer because uh, that's kind of uh, DUT is very specifically dependent on a specific project, on a specific design specification. It defines all the interface signals, what are the uh, interface level protocols for a given design. So we treat that as a lower level design. The uh, driver is a component as well as the monitors, as well as the responder. These are components in the next level which also needs to understand specifically all the signal level information, all the protocol level information such as it can drive the stimulus to the DUT or if it's a monitor which needs to monitor the interface signals it also needs to understand uh, specifically the signal level information and the same with the responder it needs to understand the signal information such as can it can respond to the DUT based on whatever signals level information comes in the DUT. Now if you see anything above this level which is a, a stimulus generator or a master uh, or a test controller or a coverage component or a scoreboard or a slave BFM, uh, ideally none of these components needs to really know about all the pin level information. Those can communicate with a driver say using a system airlock queue or a mailbox in terms of transactions which are nothing but like classes or objects so we can ideally separate out these components into a much higher level so in this case we can call them as a layer 3 where these components can communicate to a layer 2 or a layer 2 set of components 
uh, through some kind of a communication mechanism using mailboxes or queues or we'll see more about how those are done in your VM or UVM so this kind of layered approach allows you to reuse a lot of components across different projects or different verification environments so if say you say you follow this approach in building a test bench and suppose say your design change for adding a new signal or deleting a new signal or changing in terms of certain signal level interface protocol then only the driver or the monitor components or the responder needs to really be changed your master slave or your controller your scoreboard slave efms etc doesn't need to really change as long as the communication mechanism between these two uh, remains the same so this enables you to reuse the same master bfm slave bfm scoreboards across a uh, different projects or maybe we can also think of a case where like a, a stimulus generator generates like tests for a block level as well as chip level environment and that so that can be passed on to a driver in a block level environment which understand the block level stimulus or a driver in a say another block level environment which understands a different set of protocol interface but you can still reuse the same uh, stimulus generator so if you follow this kind of a layer test bench architecture then there are like several advantages in terms of reusability as well as in terms of better maintainability as well as in terms of parallel development so this is uh, some of the key concept that you should understand so let's see what are the uh, different layers so as i mentioned the bottom layer is the pin level interface so the components in the bottom layer like driver and monitor needs to understand the pin level information and this becomes tied to the design so these components needs to change when the design changes when the pin level information changes the next layer uh, abstracts all the communications in terms of transactions or classes or objects and these layers of these components in this layer can be reused across a different block level environments or chip level environments or across projects without really uh, needing to change uh, specifically whenever a design or a signal level information changes and then any further layer above works always on transactions so those can be developed parallelly those can be reused across projects or blocks so this slide captures some of the benefits so in terms of overhead yes definitely layer test benches uh, does have an initial overhead in terms of architecting the test bench and developing the test benches but then once the initial overhead is kind of consumed then it comes out with like several benefits in terms of better maintainability since only the lower layer components needs to change really based on the design the other components doesn't really need to be maintained whenever any signal level or design level information changes so the higher level components can be coded and maintained by separate teams who probably doesn't really know about every signal level information about the design it allows you to uh, reuse the components both vertically as well as horizontally so multiple components can be reused from unit level to chip level and verification environments uh, maybe even to emulation or silicon testing so that is meant by the vertical reuse and the division of the test bench into a layered approach will also enable reusing across projects or across organizations which is known as like horizontal reuse so those are some of the benefits of layered test benches so in terms of layer test benches so again this diagram just shows a classification of what all components follow uh, which are layers so the lower layer which is the pin level in pin level information layer is your dut which needs to understand your pin level design the next layer which is which looks at the pin level information and then translates those into transactions or or class objects these are specifically drivers or monitors or responders these are protocol specifics they still need to know about the design level information and those translates all the information into higher level transactions or class objects and anything above this level uh, which are like operational components or analysis components or control components and this doesn't really need to know about the protocol or the design specific information 
so these can operate and can communicate between those components using transactions or class objects so some of these components are stimulus generators your master bfm or your stable bfm and all your constraints that you use for stimulus generations and then there is the analysis components which are like coverage collectors performance analyzers score bowls and golden reference models these doesn't really again need to know about protocol specific information uh, the, these needs to know specifically about the design but then again these components can communicate between say a driver and a monitor or between master slave bfms through transactions and then on the top you will have a control layer which basically controls all your test level information so it can control your analysis components like coverage performance analysis analyzers and you can also control your stimulus generators your master slave bfms etc and these these set of components are very specific to test pen so a block level test pens can have a test controller specifically for the block a chip level uh, environment can have a specific test controller that uh, controls how a chip level stimulus has to be generated and how a chip level coverage has to be collected etc so this is one approach in which uh, you can partition your test pens or you can uh, you can re you can architect your test pens into a layered approach uh, so we'll see more about how uh, how the different ovm and uvm test pens architecture will align into this layered test pens architecture so transactor so yeah next set of slides just explains you some of these uh, components so transactors are components that converts a stream of transactions to pin level interface or vice versa so these are basically your monitors which are passive components that watches your pin information and then converts them into a stream of transactions that can be used by the next level or the next layer components and driver is another transactor or a component that converts a stream of transactions into a pin level activity so a stimulus generator can pass on transactions or class objects to driver which doesn't really without worrying about the pin level information driver can convert those into the actual stimulus to be driven to the DUT. A respondent is similar it cares to a driver so it can kind of uh, monitor the pin level information and respond to the DUT. So the operational components is the next level as we saw as we saw in the previous diagram. So these are transactional components that provide everything needed for the DUT to operate. So again, these are like stimulus generators, the master or the slave BFMs. The stimulus generator creates stream of transactions that are needed to stimulate the DUT. So stimulus generators can be random, directed or pseudo-random. The master BFM can be a bidirectional component that can send requests as well as receive responses. A slave BFM can also be a bidirectional component that can respond to requests by returning certain responses the next layer is analysis components that we saw these are components that receive information about the various activities in the test bench and then based on that information it can determine whether a design is behaving correctly or whether your verification is approaching towards completion so the two main components are scoreboards which ensure the correctness of your design by collecting information about what's going in and out of DUT and the coverage collector which specifically counts the streams of transactions and other different aspects of transactions and this helps you to determine with how how complete are you towards your verification metrics and the controller components are specifically controlling how your test should behave so these receive information from the different test bench components and control how the test when to start or stop similars, how long a test should run etc so these components will be uh, very specific to a test bench mm -hmm. so hope with that i conclude this lecture so hopefully this gave you an understanding about the importance of layer test benches and what are the different layer parts of a layer test bench architecture and the ovm and uvm test bench architecture aligns to this test bench architecture so it's kind of un important to understand this as we understand more details about OEM and UVM. So with that I conclude this section so in the further section we'll see more about the concept specifically to OEM and UVM. So thank you and stay tuned for the next set of lectures. Bye.